But from 1 Kings chapter 18, and I want to begin reading with verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 1. The word of the Lord reads, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah, in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find great grass to save the horses. And mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. I want to use for a subject, and I want you to hear this subject. It's, it's a little unique, I feel, but there's a reason for it, and you hopefully will get it as we proceed in the message. Our subject today is. The rain or the rain maker. Listen to that subject again. The rain or the rain maker. Which one do you prefer? The rain or the rain maker? No doubt many people will say, I want them both. I want the rain and I want the rain maker. But it is sad to say that really through many uh, actions and ways of the people, you can plainly see that the desire is actually for the rain and not the rainmaker. Just think about what do men really seek? Many men seek fame and fortune. There's a desire to live in comfort, in luxury, not wanting for anything. The common belief is that if I have what my heart desires, I will be happy. So they strive to reach such status. Which one do you prefer? The rain or the rain maker? The rain in this message represents the goodness and the blessings of the Lord. The writer James told us in James 1 and 17, every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So in other words, folks, whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God above who created all heaven's light. Unlike uh, the light that is there in the sky that changes due to certain circumstances God never changes or casts shifting shadows so it is God who blesses us how many of you all are thankful and grateful for the blessings of the Lord can you give him a praise for just a moment? Come on, give God a praise for a moment. God wants you, certainly in this life, he wants you to do well. He wants you uh, to be in good health and to even prosper. That's what the writer told us in 3 John, verse 2. They said, Behold, behold beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul 
prosperous. So God is not only concerned about just your spirit man, your soul. Amen. Which should be your greatest concern. But he's also concerned about your health. That's why we can pray and ask God to heal the sick. And to heal even those that have been afflicted with this uh, COVID-19 virus. God is concerned about your health. Say amen somebody. He's concerned about your finances. It is not in the will of God that you be broke, destitute, and hardly making it. God is a God who's concerned about you doing well and having food to eat, clothes to wear, and shelter in place. Say amen. And I got Bible to prove that because sometimes people think that when you get saved, uh, that you cannot enjoy wealth, cannot enjoy riches. The Bible tells me that Job was the richest man in the land of us and he was still righteous. The Bible tells me about the wealth of Abraham and he trusted in God. The Bible tells me about King Solomon. Because King Solomon, in the beginning of his days as the king, he loved the Lord. And it was Solomon who asked God to give him wisdom that he would know how to go in and out before his people. And because he asked for wisdom and not riches, God said it pleased him so. That because of what you asked of me, I'm going to also give you, along with wisdom, I'm going to give you wealth. And I'm going to give you a long life. But here is something you need to note about the men that I just talked about. They chose the rainmaker instead of the rain and yet got the rain. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Come on, say amen. By now, you ought to know who the rainmaker is in this message. The rainmaker is God himself. And I want to declare today... Yes, I need the rain, but I want the rain maker. Because if I have the rain maker, I'm certainly going to enjoy the rain. Come on, say amen, everybody. Come on and say amen again. Yes, Abraham chose the rain maker when he left his homeland of Ur and went into a land that he had never seen before. And because Abraham was obedient, God reigned on him many, many blessings. When you go back to the man Job, it was Satan who tried to prove to God that he wanted the rain instead of the rainmaker. That's what Satan told God in, in so many words because he told God that Job is only worshiping you because of the rain, if you let, if you understand the spirit of this message. The rain you have given him. I'm talking about the blessings of God. Because the Bible said he had 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 donkeys and a large number of servants. Prestige above anybody else. Matter of fact, the Bible said he was the greatest in the east. So Satan said, if you let me take these things away from him, I make him curse you to your face. God permitted him to go and to cause havoc in the life of, of Job. And even when it seemed like the rain was cut off, look at Job. Job continued to worship God. Job continued to serve the Lord, held on to his integrity because Job wanted the rain maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to know this, this afternoon that, listen, that even if the rain has been turned off, you still ought to trust him. You still ought to worship him. Because if you do like Job did, who did so, look at what happened to Job. In the end, God rewarded him with twice as much as he had in the beginning. And then that third man that I mentioned, Solomon. Solomon wanted the rainmaker. I told you. 
and the rain followed. Because the Bible talks about all of the wealth that Solomon had, his wisdom and his wealth. Men and women came from around the world just to see it. And there was the queen from Sheba that told Solomon, I didn't believe what I was told, but after seeing the blessings of God, the half has not been told. Brother or sister, if you would just live for the Lord, the half has not been told of the blessings that will come your way. God will bless you. God will see to your needs. God will make a way for, for you. Just trust him. Can you give him a praise right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's look at our text again. Because in our, in our text of the day, in 1 Kings chapter 18, there's a serious drought that has lasted three and a half years. The drought has produced a famine. Everything is drying up. The fields are dry and very little vegetation. The cattle are dying as well as other livestock. And no doubt the people were dying because there is a shortage of food and water. But notice again in our text that we just read that it was Ahab who was the king of Israel, King Ahab, husband of Jezebel, who gave instructions to his servant Obadiah the instructions were going to the land and to all the fountains of water and to all brooks per adventure. Per adventure means perhaps. So perhaps we may find grass to save the horses and mules. We don't want to lose all of our beasts. Don't you think it was strange that the king Looked like seemingly was more interested in his horses and mules rather than the people he ruled over. He said nothing about the people, but I want to save my horses and my mules. King Ahab is interested in finding water and grass. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all might not think too good of me for saying this, but I got a problem with donating to the what is that the APSA you know the folks AAASPA the folk that want you to send money in for the dogs and the cats and I know the dogs and the cats are God's creation but I said I'm not going to send anything until we do better by taking care of human beings first the folks on the street come on y'all how about black men that have been killed across this land. Some of the, the animal advocates, they'll take care of the dog before they will a black man. Y'all know something wrong with that, don't you? Amen. Come on, y'all. So, this is where Ahab was. He's trying to take care of his beast. Amen. Amen. And he's looking for water. He's looking for grass. He wanted water. So it's desires for the rain. But there is nothing that is mentioned about him seeking the rainmaker. He's seeking the water and not God. Come on, listen to me here. He wants the rain. He needs the rain. But he does not want the rainmaker. That's where many of the people in our nation are now. You want the rain, but not the rainmaker. You want God's blessings. You need God's blessings, but you don't want the rainmaker. Because in order to have the rainmaker, some changes must take place in your life. Oh, I know you want God to heal the land. You want God to take away the COVID-19 virus. You want God to let justice be done for that young man in Minnesota and even in other places in America. You want God to, to, to rain on you that your finances are well. But many of you do not want the rainmaker. Because in order to have the rainmaker, you got to surrender to his will. In order to have the rainmaker, you must give up your ways. You must give up your sins, your wrongdoing. You must give up 
the pleasures of sin. And that's what Ahab did not want to do. He didn't want to give up his sins. Remember, he's married to Jezebel. And Jezebel is an excited and wild woman. Jezebel had introduced him to a new lifestyle, including the worship of, the worship of Baal. And when you worship Baal, an idol god, it means the promotion of both female and male prostitution. Worshiping Baal meant the engagement of sexual acts with multiple partners as a form of worship. Go and do the research. If you Google some of this, you'll see it. Worshiping Baal meant the sacrifice of newborn babies in the temples of Baal. Can you imagine? I have a little grandbaby that's about three months old. Can you imagine taking a beautiful baby and going to the temple of Baal? There is an altar there. And beneath the altar, there's a fire. And you put that kicking and that baby that's making sounds of a baby over in the fire alive to be sacrificed to a God that cannot help you. Boy, as I give you such dreadful history, you ought to see that the same thing is happening right now. In the 1960s, I'm not going to be real long, but let me tell you this. In the 1960s, America experienced the sex revolution. And ever since then, there's been more adultery, fornication, that's a term we, we normally use for sex between unmarried people, and sexual perversion. Not only that, but the divorce rate and the destruction of the family has increased. More babies are born to unwed mothers. And because there, there seem to be no restraints on sexual activities, which has caused many unwanted babies to be born, now America condones the killing of babies through abortions. Friend, abortion is nothing but a form of worship to the devil himself. May I pause here because I'm in a black community. The percentage of black babies that have been aborted, that have been murdered through legal means, legal means of abortion, the highest proportion is among black people. The black population, if we had never got involved in this atrocity, the black population would have been more than double right now. And oh, what we could have done if the population had doubled and we were all registered voters. Uh huh. Some of y'all don't like what's going on. You need to vote. And what if we would use the power of voting? Amen. You can be godly and a voter. Come on, y'all. Come on, say amen here. What a change that could have been even in our community. But what I'm trying to show you, and some of you might say, Pastor Riley, you're always going to the Old Testament. Well, I, I, I have to admit I love the Old Testament. I, I love the New Testament too. But I find so many parallels between the nation of Israel, what they did that was wrong. I find the parallels between Israel and America. And I find that Baal worship, you don't call it Baal worship. But it is prevalent in America. Amen. I say it's prevalent in America. Why do I say that? Because you keep on singing and dancing to his music. These old nasty lyrics. Can I preach y'all? These old nasty lyrics of Beyonce and Snoop Dogg. And some of these folks that I don't know of, because I'm giving some names of folks I see on commercials. Some of these new names, I don't even know them. 
but they, they're given disgusting lyrics and dancing that simulate sexual activity. It is Baal worship. You drink his liquor that the folk call spirits and you get drunk. And when you get drunk, yes, some spirits are coming. Demonic spirits are coming to take over your mind. You smoke the weed and it does the same thing. Now you're out of your mind and you don't know what you're doing, but what you're doing is a sin against God. And it is a worship of Baal. And because of this, just like in King Ahab's time, there's a drought in the land. Somebody say amen. Come on, say amen. amen. The drought that I'm speaking of is not necessarily a drought from the natural water, H2O, but there's a drought and a famine. There's a drought because we have turned our backs on God. There is a famine because we are not receiving God's word. Well, I remember what Jesus told the woman at the well in St. John chapter 4 when he asked the woman to give him some water. And the woman said, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. We don't have anything to do with each other. Besides that, you don't even have anything to draw from the water. But Jesus told that woman, I've got some living water. And if you would drink of this, you would never thirst again. Then in verse 14 of that same chapter, Jesus said that the water that he would give shall be a water, a well of water, springing up into everlasting life on the inside of a person. Oh, if the world, if the world would just accept Jesus, there would be no drought. Jesus said in St. John 7 and 37b, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38, he said, he that believed on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, you could have Jesus and the Holy Ghost. The next verse let us know that Jesus, when he spoke of these waters, amen, rivers of living water, he was speaking about the Holy Ghost. But I'm, 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 I'm afraid that many people are just like Ahab today. Just like Ahab who knew about the God of heaven. Are you still listening to me? Who knew that he needed to turn to righteousness and worship the God of heaven with a whole heart. But he wanted to worship Baal. I just told you about all that foolishness. He wanted to worship Baal and yet receive the rain without the rainmaker. You see, King Ahab wanted to keep doing what he was doing. Amen. Enjoying the pleasures of sin and yet enjoy the blessings of God. He wanted Baal and the rain. In other words, he wanted the devil's stuff and God's blessings. But I declare to you again, I want the rainmaker. Because when you have the rain maker, you will also have the rain. When you have the rain maker, there is peace. Come on, y'all. I said there is peace. The prophet Elijah in this story had the rain maker. Yes, he had the rain maker even in the time of the drought. And because he had the rain maker, he had peace. He had provisions that he needed. Because when no one else could find water, look at this, this is so wonderful. The rainmaker directed him to go to a lonely place. And out in the middle of nowhere, there was water at the brook Cherith. And when the brook dried up, God directed him to go to Zarephath. I just talked about this in the Bible lesson. Directed him to go to Zarephath, where he had already spoken to a widow woman. To take care of him. Sometimes. And I, I'm, I'm going to bring this to the end in a few minutes. But sometimes. The rain maker. Might withhold the rain for a moment. Because of the sins. Of the people that are around you. Do you not know that good people suffer too. Because of the actions. Of the bad. 
But the point in this message I want to make now, you need to remember, if there's no rain, and you have the rain maker, you can trust in his word, and he will provide for you. The Bible said in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all our cares upon him, for he careth for you. Psalms 37 and 3 said, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. The rain maker will feed you in the middle of a drought. That's what he did for Elijah. When Elijah was at the brook, at first, as long as it had water, the ravens, raven is an unclean bird, but God sanctified the bird for the prophet. For the ravens brought him bread and flesh twice a day. And even when the brook dried up, hallelujah, God made a way for him in Zarephath at the house of the widow woman. Yes, I want the rainmaker. Anybody here want the rainmaker? Let me hear you if you want the rainmaker. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, I want the rainmaker. Because if I got the rainmaker, he will rain on me peace. If I got the rainmaker, he will rain on me his joy. If I have the rainmaker, he will rain on me his love. He will rain on me the Holy Ghost. And I guess that's why the late Jane Moore used to sing the song, Send Your Rain. And then he would come back later and would say, rain on me. Rain on me, Lord Jesus. Rain on me. I need your rain. I need your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. But when you want the rain maker, then you can go to God. You can go to the rain maker in full assurance that he will send the rain. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. If we would just trust the Lord, he will make a way for us. Because he's a miracle worker. Does anybody know that he's a miracle worker? Thank you, Jesus. And even though things sometimes are bad, God knows how to send the rain. Even if it's the natural rain when it is needed. Because when you look at I tested they things that got bad in Elijah's day. But in due time, God sent the rain. After three and a half years of drought. Some of the day you may be experiencing a drought in your life. Nothing is moving. Nothing is happening for you. But God know how to send the financial rain. God know how to send a rain to heal our emotions. He knows how to send the rain to heal sick bodies. And I don't know about you, but I know we need the rain maker to send the rain. Why don't you lift your hand where you are and say, Lord, send the rain. Come on again and say, Lord, send the rain. We need a rain in America. We need the Lord to do something for us. Lord, we're down here and we're dealing with this virus. We watch people die. Send the rain. Now the nation is in chaos because of the killing of seemingly innocent folks. And got riots and got all kind of disgust. Lord, we need a rain. Come on, lift your hand again and say, Lord, send the rain. Come on again and say, Lord, send the rain. Let's call on the name of the Lord because we need a rain and listen in the story 1st Kings chapter 18 and I believe it goes on somewhat in 19 as well the prophet Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal on Mount Cameron so let's call on our God you call on your God I call on my God and the God that answered by fire is the real God. The prophets of Baal, they call on Baal all morning to the noon, even cut themselves with knives in their flesh, but Baal did nothing. But oh, when Elijah called on the name of the Lord, fire came out of heaven 
and devoured the altar that he had repaired. Let's call on the rain maker. And, and I'm, call, I'm closing with this because I want you to look at what God told Israel in Deuteronomy 4 and 29. You can write that scripture down and read it. I'm going to read it now, but I want you to read the scripture. Deuteronomy 4 and 29 in my closing. The Lord spoke to, through the prophet Moses by saying, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. Listen, if you would seek him, Moses told him, you're going to find him. If thou seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Listen to this, this next scripture. When thou art in tribulation, and we're in tribulation now, we're in times of trouble. And all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, meaning the last days. And I know this prophecy even deals with Israel in the time of tribulation, but we're in the last days now as well. He said, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which swear unto them. In other words, the Lord has said, if you call on him, I'll answer. If you seek me with your whole heart, with all of your soul, I'll come to your rescue. I'll make a way for you. I'll turn these things away from you. America, if we would call on the rainmaker, if we would really seek him, God would reign on this nation. God would reign on us peace. God would give us joy. God would give us love. God would give us everything that we need because he possessed all that we need. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Can you give the Lord a hand? Praise everybody. Why don't you praise God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're coming to the end of this service. The rain. Or the rain maker. I hope that you. Would desire the Lord. Not just for the rain. But desire him. As God. As your savior. As your king.